Included in the executive budget is a proposal to actually pay volunteer firefighters. On this podcast, we'll talk to the president of the New York State Professional Firefighters Association and get his take on this idea. And while he says it might have good intentions, it could in the end result in unintended consequences that could put public safety at risk. I'm proud. I'm proud. I am proud. I'm proud to be union strong. To be union strong. To be union strong. To be union strong. I'm a teacher and I'm union strong. I wouldn't have it any other way. Joining me on the podcast today is Sam Frasina, who is the president of the New York State Professional Firefighters Association. Sam, thanks for joining me today. Great. Thanks for having me. So first, can you tell our audience a little bit about your membership, who it is that you represent? Well, we represent 18,000 professional firefighters across the state, uh, covering uh, 108 municipalities. Uh, Our firefighters uh, come from across the state, from Buffalo to New York City. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they provide professional fire protection uh, for a living. And, you know, I think one thing to point out to people is it's not just that they're fighting fires, right? They're doing all kinds of emergency calls. Like, what is what is that range of calls they answer? Well, the firefighting service has evolved quite a bit over the years. We don't just fight fires anymore. We uh, most departments uh, uh, have a uh, mandatory EMT or paramedic certification requirement to get on. Uh, Once you get on, uh, before you start working in a firehouse, uh, you're trained in high and low angle rescue, you're trained in uh, water rescue, you're trained in hazardous material response. Uh, There's a whole uh, list of of issues that we have to address and, and be trained in before we start. And stay up with that training, I would imagine, and as well. Up. It's got to change. There's mandatory uh, continuing training every year. So the reason I wanted to have you in today is to talk about a budget proposal that's out there. Um, and I know what happens a lot of times with these proposals is there's not a ton of detail. But if you can tell me a little bit about what your understanding is of it, and, and essentially my understanding is that it would involve paying on some level, volunteer Mm -hmm. firefighters, which doesn't make sense in and of itself. But um, what do you know about it and what are your concerns with it? Well, our our first concern is the fact that, you know, there has been a problem with recruiting and retaining firefighters, period, across New York State, whether professional firefighters or volunteer firefighters. It is a concern. Um, And our concern is when it was addressed or they attempted to address it on a state level, they left the biggest component, our members, um, out of the picture. Uh, we weren't included. We weren't asked for input. And as a result, uh, the, the language that they came up with that ended up in the budget uh, is very problematic. It has a number of holes. It has a number of questions that are unanswered. Uh, they're looking to, to turn uh, volunteer firefighters into paid firefighters. And uh, the, they left out a number of issues when uh, they came up with this language. There are no uh, parameters, there are no uh, details as to what kind of training would be required, uh, what uh, a volunteer firefighter would look like. Uh, They want to pay people, and again, it's not in the language, but when you dig into uh, what they're actually looking to do, which isn't in writing, they want to pay 20% of a paid firefighter's salary to volunteers. So where's that money going to come from? Is that state-funded? Um, that money would come from the municipality if the municipality chooses to do so. Okay. So you could have neighboring municipalities uh, that, are, that are volunteer where one would choose to pay uh, volunteers on an hourly rate when they responded, and the neighboring community would choose not to. And the problem that you would come into in, in that case is people who are volunteering for the community that, that does not pay may want to go over to the other community, leaving their own community uh, with, even, with even less right. members to respond and more vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Uh, another issue is uh, we have a lot of combination uh, departments throughout the state, meaning they're both paid and volunteer firefighters. 
So now, uh, if you are going to pay volunteers, what you have are two uh, classifications of paid members. Uh, you have members that are paid uh, a, a regular rate and do it for a living, and you have other members who are paid at a smaller rate but don't necessarily have uh, the same qualifications or a mandate for those qualifications. So if a municipality looks to save money in a budget, they could get rid of the guaranteed pay response and go more uh, go the cheaper route and, and look to, to uh, attract more volunteers who aren't guaranteed to respond, but uh, you know, will we'll get paid just at a, a lower rate. So this really comes down to a public safety issue. Yes, it does. End. So is there a resolution here, do you think? Is there a solution that could address that issue of, um, you know, volunteers? Because I think we can agree there are some parts of the state that are just so rural, it probably makes sense, right? You know, it's yes. not like you want to do away with the volunteers. No. But um, what, do you think, what do you think a compromise could look like? Well, the best way to see what can work in the future is is uh, taking a look at how the fire service has evolved. And in a lot of areas in the state, especially areas where uh, they're becoming um, more and more populated, we're getting bigger populations, uh, they have gone from a fully volunteer service to a combination service. So uh, you still have your volunteers uh, who play a very big role in the fire service, and they're complemented with uh, some paid firefighters in, in areas where you really need to get uh, those fire apparatus off the floor. I mean, that's the most important, the biggest factor, whether you're talking about the response to a medical emergency or a fire, is time. Mm -hmm. You need to get those uh, apparatus off the floor and to the scene uh, as soon as possible. And the only way to provide that quick response is by having people in a firehouse ready to jump on that fire truck and get it to where it needs to go. So, um, and that's what we all want. That's what we mm. all depend on, that you're going to be able to be sure. there when we need you, right? Yes. Um, there's also an issue with recruiting and retaining paid professional firefighters. Correct. Is that true? And so what do you, how can that be addressed? Well, we're looking to address it right now uh, in the legislature. Uh, we have continued to see our benefits be eroded. Mm -hmm. uh, tier six was, you know, stepping back a minute, mm -hmm. we, we had a tier two uh, pension, uh, pension tier. Right. That was deemed to be unsustainable. And we understand that. It wasn't a surprise that something had to be tweaked with tier two. That led us to Tier 3, to Tier 5. Before the ink was dry on Tier 5, uh, we saw Tier 6. And that means when you go up in these tiers, the benefits are diminished. Correct. Correct. And, they're, and they've been diminished to the point where our members uh, can't really uh, earn a decent pension. Uh, they've taken the, the, uh, the avenue for, um, you know, creating a decent pension uh, out of the mix and our guys are looking at, our guys and girls are looking at, um, you know, a job that has become more and more dangerous, a job where we're seeing many more uh, members die of, of uh, heart diseases, uh, cancers, uh, lung diseases. And on the other side, um, you know, if uh, you get, you're lucky enough to get to retirement uh, and, and remain relatively healthy, uh, you don't really have uh, a decent pension. And it didn't used to be that way. These were, no. you know, you have to have that passion to want to yeah. do this kind of work in the first place um, right. and understanding the risk involved. Involved, But um, now when you're, and we see this across all public service, really, you see yeah. that um, recruitment and retention because of mm -hmm. those benefits. They're no longer the jobs that they used to be with that stability. Correct. Um, so what do you want people to know then where we are right now with this being proposed in the budget, paying volunteers, um, I mean, what, what can people do to try to pull this back or, you know, just educate them on, on what's at stake? Well, we need to take a step back. We need to get everyone around the table, everyone that has a stake in this. Again, recruitment and retention, the fire service is, 
is an issue for all firefighters. Mm -hmm. Whether you're paid, volunteer, everyone has this issue. We need to get everyone to the table. We need to take a look at common sense uh, measures that will really uh, fix this problem. What they're looking to do now will throw millions and millions of more dollars uh, at a problem that that uh, will not provide a solution. Mm -hmm. Even when um, when uh, Fasny's leadership uh, showed up to uh, to comment on on this uh, budget piece, they admitted that this isn't the solution. And Fasny, in their who's Fasnu? Fasny, I'm the, sorry. They're the leaders of the volunteer fire service. Okay. And they they admitted in their testimony in their in their speech that uh, this uh, isn't the answer. Really? Yes. They they said that uh, it will result in the uh, cannibalization of different volunteer fire firehouses and fire districts because you're just creating uh, an uneven system where uh, some people will be paid and some people, depending on your municipality, will not be paid. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to uh, come up with packages that include uh, pensions, pay, uh, tax breaks, now we're taking volunteers and making turning them into uh, paid employees. So these are are paid. They will be they would be paid employees, just paid at a, a lower rate. And they could go from community to community, like you say, to right. take advantage of that. Yes. Okay. Well, I appreciate you letting us know all about that, and we'll um, include some links uh, at the end of a podcast for people who want more information because the New York State AFL-CIO is strongly mm -hmm. opposed to this as well, as yeah. you know. Um, but before I let you go, um, today on the day that we're recording this, um, I know you must have a heavy heart, and I feel it too mm -hmm. because you're actually on your way to Buffalo. Um, there was a firefighter, a professional firefighter, Jason Arno, only 37 years old, who was killed right. in a fire in Buffalo. I know he leaves behind a three-year-old little girl. Um, so it just speaks to the dangers of the job, and I, and I know this must be a difficult day for you. Extremely difficult for all our members. Uh, this is something that in the back of our minds we know um, has and, and could happen to uh, any one of our members uh, on any given day, and uh, it's just uh, it's tragic uh, when this occurs. But um, again, it, it it points out uh, the need uh, to have these benefits to make sure that our families are taken care of. Our members go to work uh, every day, ready to put their life on the line, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, unfortunately, um, our brother Arno, uh, you know, he he. He lost his life, mm -hmm. and uh, he gave it selflessly in, in uh, protecting uh, the the uh, people in Buffalo. And uh, you know, the the least we can do um, to honor him is to make sure that uh, uh, that his family is is taken care of. Absolutely, and I I've been reading some stories about the community in Buffalo is really rallying behind that family, mm -hmm. which is good to see. Well, Sam Fresina, president of the New York State Firefighters Professional Firefighters Association, thank you for joining me today. Okay, thank you. Joining me on the podcast is our communications and campaigns coordinator, Liz O'Neill. Hi, Liz. Hi, Darcy. That was tough hearing about that that young firefighter who lost his life. Oh, it's a terrible loss for the entire Buffalo community, the entire Union family. Um, it's just just terrible. And uh, Jason, I guess he went by Jay Arno, had gone into a, a, a burning building in Buffalo. Uh, this was on March 1st. This was a three-alarm fire, very serious fire, and, and tragically he lost his life, and our hearts go out to that community, his family, certainly, and all his union brothers and sisters. Yes. Um, Sam uh, was talking about, you know, that need to attract um, volunteer firefighters and even paid, it's really a challenge today. Uh, the volunteers alone, I, I see it in my community, they just can't get people to come in. There's a lot of responsibilities today, right, with people to just be able to up and leave their job and do that. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely changed so much, you know, in the past several decades. It's a totally different playing field today. And, of course, Sam is concerned about training level. There's so many uh, things on the table to be uh, considered. But I, what's refreshing, too, is that they aren't just opposed to it. And here at the State Fed, we're not just opposing it. There are solutions. Um, so we're really hopeful that they can get that message across, that they do have some solid ideas on how to address this. Right. At the end of the day, all the stakeholders just need to come to the table and find a solution that's going to work for everyone and it's going to better serve our communities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Darcy. 
This has been a production of the New York State AFL-CIO. Our president is Mario Salento. Our secretary treasurer is Terry Melvin. We're a federation of 3,000 unions representing 2.5 million union members, retirees, and their families with one goal, to raise the standard of living and quality of life of all working people. We keep New York State Union strong by fighting for better wages, better benefits, and better working conditions. For more information on the labor movement in New York, visit nysaflcio.org. Until next time, stay union and stay strong.